we're going to talk a little bit about what is the t distribution and why do we use it. So the way I like to explain it is essentially I like to think of the t distribution as being like z, the standard normal, except for samples of data. So essentially we have to use the t distribution instead of z um, because we don't actually know the true population standard deviation and so we have to use the sample standard deviation when we're trying to estimate the standard error. Right? So reminder, the standard error of the mean, we have to replace it with the sample standard deviation and the t distribution helps us account for that. So where the t distribution came from was someone named William Gossett. They were working on the quality control at Guinness Breweries and they noticed, so with quality control, you tend to take small sample sizes. Okay, and he noticed that um, his calculations using the normal distribution were a bit off and they were underestimating things. And he realized that this was due to having small sample sizes and the estimate of the sample standard deviation not being a very good estimate of the true or population standard deviation. Um, so he went on and developed this, what's called family of distributions, the T distribution. Now, because he did the work for Guinness Breweries, it didn't get published under his name and it got published under the name student. So it's often known as the student's T distribution. So essentially, the T distribution is like the normal distribution, okay, the standard normal, except where it accounts for the extra uncertainty in having to estimate the standard deviation using the sample standard deviation. So um, it's worth noting that as the sample size gets larger and larger, the t distribution converges towards the normal, the standard normal, or it becomes the standard normal. So here we can see this is z, the standard normal. Right? Here we've got a t distribution with degrees of freedom of 15. And here we've got a t distribution with degrees of freedom of 5. What we can notice is that the t distribution looks pretty similar to the normal, except it's a little bit wider. Okay, and that's again to account for the extra uncertainty in the estimate of the sample standard deviation. You can notice as our degrees of freedom are going up, the t distribution starts to look more and more like the normal. And in fact, a t distribution with d degrees of freedom of infinity becomes the normal. Okay. Um, now it's important to note of course, we're never going to have a sample size of infinity, um, but once we get a sample size, say, bigger than 120, the t distribution and the standard normal become approximately the same. Once we get a sample size bigger than 200, there's almost no difference at all. Okay, so I, I like to just explain the t distribution and think of it as the normal distribution for a sample of data. When we work through these things, we're generally using software to do the exact calculations. So that's why I often work with Z instead of T when explaining the um, concepts. I find that focusing on T distribution, trying to find values from a T table, puts students' attention on how to find a value from a table rather than the larger concept that we're trying to talk about. Hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to our channel. Like our videos. Stick around, guys. Cause we got lots more.